Hallelujah Scriptures is history in the making. This video is for the benefit of those who want to know the vision behind the Hallelujah Scriptures. In this video, we will explain and answer many questions that may have been raised by those who have read through the website previously and read through the books of Leviticus and Matthew. First of all, none of us would ever dream of disobeying the Father or going against His Torah and commands. This would mean you'd be out of His will, and there are a great many scriptures that outline how important it is to obey. We can see from Scripture that it is important to obey His voice and heed what He says, especially when He commands us to obey. What He commands is far more important than what we say or think. Scripture has many warnings to go with the promises. If the Father commands and confirms it with a vision, who are we to stand in His way? There are many examples in Scripture where the Father's servants have been given a vision and have ignored and suffered the Father's wrath. Scriptural examples would include King Shaul, who lost the throne through disobedience. Yonah, who initially fled from the prophecy of the Father, and the old prophet of 1 Kings 13, who is slain by a lion for seemingly minor transgression. The vision for the Hallelujah Scriptures goes back around 30 years to a Christian believer at the time by the name of Dr. Chris Koster, who was a doctor in South Africa. He was sent a tract by a gentleman who used to distribute many tracts. Being a Christian, the older gentleman received a tract on the name of the Father. He read it and forwarded it on to Chris with a note questioning what he thought of it. Chris received the tract about the name one morning before heading off to work. He read it and then put it in a drawer before departing. He was scheduled to attend a patient by a small plane with a pilot. After attending the patient, Chris and the pilot were heading back home. The pilot warned Chris that they had run out of fuel and that a crash was imminent. Chris immediately went behind his seat, fell to his knees, and started to pray. It was then that he heard a voice very clearly that said, What did you do with the information on the track that I had sent you? Chris thought, and the Father's Spirit said, What did you do with the information I had sent you? Chris then realized what the Father meant and promised for the rest of his life that he would not let a day go by without doing all he could to proclaim the name of the Father. Chris was later given the vision to translate the scriptures first published in 1993, which he started in late 1969 or early 1970. He first started with an Afrikaans translation, and by the time he got to the book of John, he was troubled at the use of so many pagan words. This realization is covered in the book he authored entitled Final Reformation. He then initiated an English translation, realizing that far more people would benefit in English. Chris paid a high price for his work. Six days a week, he would go into the theological college and study and work on the translation of the scriptures. He had to move to another city for this, and it was at this time he lost his wife and family as they did not support him in his new belief and so stayed behind. It was made clear to Chris by the Father's Spirit not to sell the scriptures in any way, shape, or form. They were always to be free. That was commanded by the Father to Chris, which is printed in the 1993 first edition. He was also told not to copyright his work it was a free gift to all. Dr. Chris Coster also made this clear with the first book he wrote called Final Reformation, which he also stated never to be sold, which was later changed to Come Out of Her, My People, then copyrighted and sold. Sadly, Chris passed away in 1996. He was a humble man and did not want any recognition for his work, which is why you will not see his name in the scriptures. Sadly, many people will not understand free. It is illogical that the Father and His Son would give a vision and not provide for it. A number of Messianic evangelists worldwide who call on the name of the Father 
who utilize the 1998 edition of the scriptures have been giving away thousands at personal cost and were charged high prices and simply cannot afford these prices, giving them out freely to those in need and who have ears to hear and have acknowledged the name of the Creator and His Son are vital to salvation. Over many years, many attempts by a number of evangelists in this team and worldwide have been made to get discounts or permission to be able to print their own copies of the scriptures, only to be told no and rebuked for asking. A vision was given to one team member to obtain a 1993 edition of the scriptures. It was a harder task than first thought, and they did not know why the Father's Spirit asked this. It took a number of months to track a copy down. When it arrived, they prayed and opened the book, and it opened to the first page. It read, This translation, the scriptures, is not sold. It is given free. Our Messiah said, You have received without paying. Give without being paid. Matthew 10, 18. Why? Because he gave his all. He gave his life on a cruel stake in order to save us from all sin to redeem us from all lawlessness. So all we ask is a donation to meet the printer's cost, that's all. Bursting into tears, the person then went into much prayer with a number of others, and a vision was given and confirmed by more than two witnesses to produce the Hallelujah Scriptures. Three years before the vision, one team member had been compelled to start to learn and understand Hebrew. He, not being tied to the workforce, spent nearly daily learning to read and write Hebrew, and now understands why he was asked to do this. The name and the color for the Hallelujah Scriptures did not come for two months. It was given by the Father's Spirit to one of the team members and confirmed by the Ruach to another team member, and was made clear by His Spirit that each time someone says, Hallelujah Scriptures, they are saying, Praise Yah for His Word. This is truly all praise and honor to Him. This translation will go on for many years and into the end of days for His esteem. This vision, continuing from the original vision given to Chris, is that this translation is never to be sold and will never be sold. This video and the pages on our website are testimony to this and will be a witness that this translation will never be sold or resold and remains copyright free under the condition that it is never to be sold as it was directed by the Father. If anyone copies and sells this translation, they will be in direct disobedience to the Father. Some may question the legality of utilizing a work wherein its current form claims to be copyrighted. In the first place, who has the right to copyright the word of the Father? Even the good old King James Version, heirs and all, never copyrighted the work done by those early translators. The scripture's translation, completed by Mr. Coster in 1993, was of course never intended to be copyrighted. Please note the usage of this wording. This translation, it is not the book alone that is not to be sold. It is the translation itself that is free. Nowhere in this first printing will you find any mention of copyright. One may suggest giving some form of credit to ISR for their efforts to date. Here's a simple parable. There once was a great master painter who spent the whole latter end of his life painting the greatest masterpiece seen by human eyes. His vision was to place the masterpiece in a public museum for all to see, free of charge. On his deathbed, he trusted the masterpiece to his closest friend to continue the vision of his lifelong work. This trusted friend then took the masterpiece and put it in his private museum, charging people to come and see the masterpiece that is now claimed as his own work. Question: Should someone who comes and retrieves the masterpiece, reinstituting it in a public museum for all to see free of charge and restoring credit to its original painter, be accused of theft? And should the trusted friend who claimed it as their own get any credit for the work?